if Elijah were there on the day of Pentecost, that time that the sound was blasting, Elijah would have interpreted it. This is the outpouring of the Spirit. My question tonight is, can you hear the sound? Can you hear it? Can you hear the sound? They say, give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Why? Because the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. Meaning upon many nations. Even in your village. There's an utterance that God has spoken that is looking for a location to find expression. It is hanging over the village. And if the purposes of God will prosper in that village, it will begin to prosper. When men begin to understand that sound that is in that place, and they probe into the sound until they can get the accurate voice that is traveling with the sound, the accurate policy that is traveling with the sound, when you are able to tap into the wisdom that is captured, encapsulated, insulated by the sound and you get the voice. Right? The sound is the package, is the package that wraps the voice. Many times before I hear the voice of God, I hear sound. And then I begin to sing the sound. When you say you receive a sound from heaven, you receive a song from heaven, keep singing that song. Before you sing for too long, you will stumble on the voice. Now, so, in, in Psalms 29, what is happening here is that a prophet like Elijah has unraveled the voice from the sound. There's a difference between the voice and the sound. See, but the voice is encapsulated in the sound and the voice of God travels like that. So whether you'll be able to extract the voice is dependent on how you have trained your spirit in the capacity of the sound. The, the, the scripture in Psalms 29 tells us all the experiential dimensions that are attributed to the voice. All the experiential dimensions. Very graphic. Very illustrative. If I receive a song from heaven, it means that God is speaking. I just keep singing it. And I keep singing it. And I keep singing it. And before I know it, I stumble on the voice. I go through the sound and I hear the voice. The pathway to the voice is a journey through the tunnel of sound. Have you ever prayed before you received this, a song? And what you did was that you enjoyed the song and went out. No, you, you, you are still deficient in the training. Just like Joshua. Joshua could not discern that you need to travel to the tunnel of the sound in order for you to pick the voice. God was not into entertainment when he brought you into the corridor where you could now perceive the sound. There was a voice in it. Meanwhile, the Bible says that just in case you hear the voice, the sound, and you don't know the significance of the sound, the profit that was in that spiritual engagement was lost. It, you, you didn't step into the profit. Many of us, I, I don't want to use the word, that's, but that's how it is actually, but that word is not good. Many of us romance in, in the effect of spiritual things because when God releases a thing it travels with effect so we touch the effect and we romance with it and we don't touch the reality of what is traveling the reason why Elijah didn't look at the cloud he didn't need to because he was connected to where the things were was being bettered from and, and, and he, he heard the sound the sound it I hear the sound and he said what the sound was. An abundance. Of rain. 
as okay we are about the same age range so you were you 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 know cockroach are done now uh -huh. some of you don't know cockroach do you still remember the song in cockroach Adon? i remember bongo sequin now stop playing so that you can find a tune and play the song bongo sequin sang i don't know by what inspiration but he sang a song just like many songs that Sonny Okosu, is this Sonny Okosu? Yeah. Sang about Nigeria. It was as if he saw today before he sang it. You remember some of the songs he sang? Which way in Nigeria? This, he was, where? In my own opinion, some of those songs were prophetic. In my own opinion. Just like a lot of songs that Bob Marley sang were prophetic. And I believe Bob Marley was a prophet that lost his way. Because Bob Marley could pick sound, but he could not pick voice. Now, so Bongo Sikwe sang, he said, We will, we, hmm? shall we ever get there? We will ever make it. We will ever hear the sound of the cockroach. I don't. I forgot this some of the words. But he said, We will. Shall we ever get there? Shall we ever make it? Shall we ever hear? What? The sound of the cockroach at all. Continue. I just wanted us to see that unbelievers can hear sound. But they cannot pick voice. I'm trying to add add muscle to your message. Michael Jackson is the next most popular human being after Jesus Christ. That's what... I'm not talking from what I think of. That is the documentary. It is documented. The next most popular man after Jesus Christ. Never preached a sermon all he did was make sound and he pastored many people more than people that were called into the pastoral office he put human words on the sounds he picked all right and some of some people sang those songs till they went to the grave i don't know if i have I should go where I want to go. So God never does anything except He makes sound first. We need to travel from the sound into the voice. When we begin to pray, He will make sound. Turn to the book of Job chapter 7. Job chapter 38 from verse 5. Job 38 from verse 5. As I round up so that we can pray. So what happened to John the Baptist? In the scripture where you read, you know there were two priests. Right? One of the priests was a real priest that was a descendant of Aaron. The other high priest was a political priest that the Romans selected. So that was the mediator between Israel and the Romans. So what, that was the personality that the Romans, the high priest, the Romans said that we, they are going to relate with. They don't recognize the, the son of what? Of Aaron. So in that day, there were two high priests. Now the Bible gave us a graphic picture of the political setting, the structure of government in that time. Mention names. You could see that the structure was very bogus. But God was no longer recognizing the priesthood that was in the city. And what happened was that John set up another priesthood. 
and that priesthood was the priesthood that heaven could connect to it. And the fact that the voice of God went to the wilderness and not to the temple in the city was that God had abandoned this priestly structure. So where voice is will tell you where God is. I'm not talking about where voice was. I'm not talking about the history of voice. Where the voice goes, the direction it goes, actually reveals where God is. That was a day when God left the city center. Left the structures that were built in panelled houses. And the voice went in search of a man in the wilderness. Because a new priesthood has been set up. And God was saying, by sending his voice there, he was saying he was going to build the next phase of things with the priesthood that John had built where? In the wilderness. Because the priestly ministry precedes the prophetic ministry. John came from a family of priests. He understands how to connect with God. And he was busy in intercession, busy in prayer. And it came to pass that the voice of God went to locate him in the wilderness. The place he was, was not a kind of place that you would expect that the voice would go. Then we discovered, in the case, in the situation of John, that the voice could travel and avoid the temple. And the, the voice could actually go to the wilderness. It was priesthood that brought it. If you wanted to follow the move of God at that time, you will have to go to the wilderness to seek out the counsel of God. Because the utterances that John was speaking, they did not sound like the utterances that came from the temple. There was life and vitality in it. There was direction in it. There was power in it. And all of those things that we see in the book of Psalms 29, which if we have time we'll look at. You will see all of them in the ministry of John the Baptist. As a sign that it was a true voice that he decoded. Meanwhile, there was a political system built. There, were, there was a political high priest. There was a bona fide high priest. All of those structures God abandoned. In order to identify with a new kind of priesthood. It means that if there is a voice in the wilderness... God has set aside the priesthood that we used to know. And if people are still talking there, then what they are saying is noise. Because the voice has moved. Now, we do not say this boastfully or to say we are the best thing that happened to the world. Hallelujah. But you see, the voice has gone to the wilderness again. I speak in parables. Um, hallelujah. I say hallelujah. 